Now, Copy, the mantra in the offseason and the spring training was about being competitive in 2017. When you look back on the season, how much progress do you think was made with the Braves, not only at the major league level, but in the organization in general? Well, there was a lot of progress made because we got a lot of young players up here. When you go through a rebuilding process, it's not going to be something where you just snap your fingers and you're good. It takes years from when you draft a player or trade for a player to get him up to the big leagues, to get him um, acclimated, and to get him playing at a championship-type level. So I think we made a lot of progress this year with some of the players who were up here already, but also the fact that we broke in a lot of top prospects. You look at Albies, Newcomb, Sims, Gohara, Minter, uh, and there's probably three or four more that are good players that I just can't recall at this point in time, but there were a lot of really good prospects that have made their big league debut, that have gotten their feet wet, and that will be better served for it going into 2018. When you look at the wins and losses, is that ultimately how you guys judge Brian Snicker if you decide to bring him back, or is it about more than that when you, when you consider Snick's job? When you consider valuing anybody, it comes down to more than just wins and losses. Last year at the winter meetings, uh, a primary frustration following the 2016 season was the development of those young arms, which led to the signings of Bartolo Colon and Jaime Garcia and R.A. Dickey. You just mentioned some of the young prospects we've seen that have come up. Do you feel more comfortable with where you're at with your young arms this offseason, or will that still be a need when you go out and run the market? Well, you can never have too much pitching. We're happy with the young pitchers who the young pitchers who have come up here and there's more on the way so part of what you've got away is do you want to sign somebody long term and have them block prospects and eat up money or do you want to go with kids the great thing about the players we signed last year is that they were one year deals it frees up our kids for next year I think as you look at our 2018 rotation obviously you've got Julio Tehran, Mike fulton -Evitz, Sean Newcomb and you know We've still got to make a choice about if we bring back Ari Dickey, you look at Luis Gohara, Lucas Sims, and then there's a next wave of young pitchers coming. Colby Allard, Mike Soroka, Tuki Toussaint, Kyle Wright, and then there's a wave behind them, and a wave behind them. So, you know, we want to create opportunity for our young pitchers, we want to build with our own players, and I think that the players we got last year helped us create the opportunity. We didn't have to break with Sean Newcomb, we didn't have to break with Sims. So even though they didn't win the Cy Young Award, they still did okay and they helped us get to where we are right now. When you consider R.A. Dickey and that option that he has, is it ultimately deciding whether or not you're going to call that in? Is it about how the progress is you see with these younger guys as we're in, you know, the, at the end of the season and how that whole sort of thing is measured? There are a number of factors that play into it. I think that R.A. has done a great job. He's a great person. Um, you know, we need to talk to him, see if he's thinking about coming back he's he has a great family um, you know it's something that he's got to make a choice and we've got to make a choice I think you weigh what he brings I think you weigh the young pitching we have on hand I think you add all of it up but he's a great person I'm very happy he was a part of our club this season Braves fans have waited to see Ozzie Albies and Dansby Swanson together to see them playing so well together thriving uh, late in the year how excited was that for you as you as you watch it all unfold yeah it's been great it seems like they really feed off of each other and we saw that in spring training of 2016 where they make each other better and you know they're obviously very close friends and watching them play second base and shortstop is fun and you know I hope it's something we see for the next 20 years of all the top prospects that you've acquired it was an under the radar international signing in Ronald Acuna that's jumped up into the conversation as the number one prospect in all of baseball what is the checklist for the organization making sure that when he is ready he becomes an everyday player at the major league level and what is his rise what has it been like to watch from your perspective well it's been really great just seeing the way that he's played so well he got better every level he went to and that's very rare to see that type of thing happen for us you know he's 19 years old and it was tough to call him up because number one where's he gonna play we've got two veteran corner outfielders who are really good players we've got gold glove Sarah and fielder who's on pace for 200 hits so there wasn't a clear spot for him to play we didn't want to call him up just so that he could ride the bench during a season in which we weren't gonna make the playoffs um, you know as well there are a few things he could still work on and that he could still improve a lot of people forget this guy missed most of the 2016 season so you know we've fast-tracked so many kids up here sometimes it's not the worst in the world if we you know wait and see how things go in spring training 
And then when you look ahead uh, into next year's winter meetings and ahead into that off season, uh, what is it? What has it been like just watching how some of these young players are developing, the Colby Allers and the Mike Sorokas of the world, and judging whether you're going with the future or you're waiting for um, those players to come up and develop? What What is that balance like for you uh, as a general manager? Yeah, it's a tough balance. You want to win. I mean, I'm tired of years where we don't win 90 games, where we don't go deep in the playoffs. But what we're trying to do is, you know, get back to winning playoff series, get back to World Series. We haven't won a playoff series in 16 years here. That's what motivates me, not 85 wins or anything like that. So what we're trying to do is really make it about the prospects and put them in the best spot to where they can have success. And that goes back to what we were talking about with Ronald. We don't want to rush him and bring him up here so that our fans are, you know, pleased for a short-term period. We want to do what's best for Ronald so that our fans are pleased for the next 20 years. So part of what we're trying to do with these kids, it takes time. You know, and we've fast-tracked prospects as much as any team out there, but it takes time. When we started this, it was a barren farm system ranked pretty much dead last. And we took high school kids. We took players that were far away in trades, players that were hurt. So we've taken a long, hard road. There haven't been many quick fixes here, and just takes time. I wish we could fast forward it, because I want to see these kids up here. I want to see us start to win and start winning playoff series. But we've got to do right by these kids, and I think their time is coming, and it's coming soon. At what point do you start to put together an off-season shopping list as you head to the winter meetings, or is that something that you've already kind of sort of formulated to-do list now? We started that process after the trade deadline. I mean, when you're at the trade deadline, you know, you're not looking, when you're a team like us that was, you know, 10 games under 500 at the deadline, you're not looking at guys that are going to help you win right now. You're saying, okay, is there a trade we can make for somebody that might help us out 2018, 2019, 2020? Or if it's just somebody that can help make us better in 2018 and help us finish with a better year in 2017. So we started that process during the trade deadline. Um, I think as the year goes on and you see more of the kids and you see who can really help us at the start of 2017 and who may take a little more time, I think that's when you really formulate, okay, here's what we need, here's what we don't need, here's what we can wait on. Anytime a franchise hits that reset button, uh, they push their window back and you're trading the present for the future. And uh, uh, But anybody that watched baseball this year, whether it was the All-Star game or just around, could see the likes of Craig Kimbrell and Andrew Dunn Simmons and Alex Wood pitching or playing really well. Uh, you believe in what you've done here. At any point, does that test your patience as you're waiting on the young talent to come up when you look out and you see who all is playing well while you're waiting on, let's call it the Mike Soroka or the Colby Allard. It, is there a balancing act in terms of the patience that it takes for a GM? Yeah, it takes a lot of patience. Those are three great players. It was tough trading all three of them. They're also three great people and they're people that you root hard for. You know, I'm not out there hoping they go 0 for 4 or get bombed. I mean, these guys came up as Braves. They're guys that I got to know personally. They're great people, and I wish them the very best going forward. But you can't look back. Once they're traded, they aren't Braves, and I wish them the best as long as they're not facing us. For me, it's more about the players that we got for them, hoping that they do well and hope get us to winning our next playoff series, our next World Series. Some changes made to the front office. Do you feel that you're at the point where you're still continuing to put your imprint uh, on this franchise and this organization as a general manager? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've worked for John Hart for three years. He's great. The guys we've hired are going to work with John and me, and it's going to be the same vision with two new voices that we're very fortunate to have. John Coppola at the center as the Braves enter what could be another pivotal offseason.